board ko lang chita ko. It's a simple. One of the busiest boards. Chita ko. Right? The government of India is trying to convince the Bangladesh government to develop the trade with the Southeast Asia to allow the non-distant people to allow to use that particular port. Chita ko. So that will be little, you know, uh, as compared to Calcutta, it will be little closer to us. The ceiling will be closer to us for increasing exports. Now, why do you think China is much ahead of us in exports? Do they have fabulous foreign exchange reserve? Why do you think China is much more ahead in terms of? Because they have constructed the infrastructure in such a way, right? Now, suppose from Nepal, every tributaries in China, every small small rivers in China is connected to the sea. Now, suppose for example, we have a river, uh, say in uh, Surachanpur. I am just giving an example, hypothetical example. Now, this particular person wants to send some goods to Europe. He can do the consignment from Surachanpur itself. So, every small town, every river is connected to the sea. Lake. So, because of that, any person who is manufacturing goods, he can sell his product globally because every river is connected to the sea. You can go cut sandals from anywhere in China. Yeah. Next slide, please. <clears throat> now, when you go to a bank and you tell, I want to be an exporter, I would like to do some export transaction or an import transaction, right? So these are the bank primary, primary checks and the MIC document which needs to be deposited with the bank. Number one, there when you tell that I am an importer or an exporter, I would like to do foreign exchange transaction. What they will do is, they will, there are two staffs. They will visit your company and see whether your business is existing, yeah, existing or not, your business. They will see your documents. They will see your documents, whether you have an existence, you have a partnership deed or a proprietorship deed, what is your income tax returns, do you have a GSC? So these are the primary checks, what two bank officials have to visit that particular customer and give a report to the bank. Right? That is called as, and they, they prepare a report. They visit and they prepare a report called as SBR, that is site visit report. It's done by the bank officials, two bank officials and they need to give it to the bank. Once they complete the site visit reports, right? Now I'm coming to your question now. Now, uh, can you ask your question a little louder? Like, uh, what is, how do I know Please listen to her. Yeah. How do I know the person in here? Suppose you are an exporter, and this particular customer is demanding you, you send the goods, I will pay the money on a, after receiving the goods. Now there is a risk here. What if the customer runs away after receiving the goods? There is a risk there, right? So what do we do in this case? We need to check. I give you an example of my uncle. Wears good shirt, good, good tie, good bag. Right? We don't know his financial stress. So we need to check whether the importer who will be importing my goods is in any kind of financial stress. I need to check his, I need to check his credential. How I need to check his credential? This report can be generated, data and production. The cost of this report is 10,000 rupees. The Dun and Bradshaw report can be downloaded of any company across the world. Of any company across the world. That report will give you the credentials of that particular company. If the credential says it's a loss making company, will you be comfortable to send the goods? No. No, right? Mm -hmm. It cannot So this is a multinational company, Dun and Gatshin. I mean, if you say Dun and Gatshin, generally what I have done is I have generated more than uh, 2,200 reports. But I have never experienced any of this uh, thing. So it's just a report to record. Sir, DNB itself a company? DNB this is DNB itself a company? The report is called Dun and Gatshin, yes. So that is a different thing. Uh, suppose if you have this suspicious, see then if you suppose rightly he is saying that if there is any tempering of the financials, 
Hmm. Because Dhan and Brashit is right. The Dhan and Brashit, what will happen is they will only take the company financial. What if the company is giving a wrong financial? What will happen in that case? So if you have any, if you have any suspicious thing which is going and troubling your mind, then you take the money in advance from the important thing. No, they do. A, they have an analytical and a research center. They uh, keep researching on companies. So there are uh, more than two lakh two lakh companies. They have a, they maintain a database of all the companies. Yeah. Suppose, for example, yeah, if there is a tendering of report, and you are not tagging it with that particular report, so that report is also doing business with your team. That's a right. in different if you case. See, there's always a system of every individual. Right. If you feel that there's some issue, I want to cross it again, I want to take a step of it. Generally what happens is, see when you go to a doctor and the doctor says you I have a I have a problem with my hand. You go to show, show to a doctor and the doctor says you have to do a surgery. So obviously you go for a second opinion, right? In a better place. So you can always take a second opinion. If you are not satisfied with that, you can always take the money in advance. Okay. 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 Right, but in this particular kind of trade, you should always take a second opinion. Right? Then is Google check. I would give again a live example. There was a customer who has received two and a half crores from a company, 2.5 crores from a company in Dubai. This money was lying with the bank for uh, more than 15 days and all of a sudden when I was just going through the bank records, I saw this particular money was lying for the last 15 days, two and a half crores. So I asked my team, one of my team members, why is this money lying from two and a half, uh, uh, sorry, from the last 15 days? So this guy says, no sir, actually this particular customer is not able to give any justification on this money. I said, can you take an appointment with this customer, let's one meet him. Right? So I went and met this customer. Right? This guy was from Guwahati. And this customer says, I have taken a franchise for repairing ACs of ACs of LG and Samsung. So because of that, this, this company, uh, there's a company who has taken that particular contract from LG and Samsung, and this money has come to my account. I said, what is the purpose of this money? No, I want to do business. I said, you must be very lucky because you want to do a business for a company and the company is also paying you money to do the business. You want to do a business, have you seen it once? And you want to do a business and the company is also paying you money to do the business. Who will do that? Suspicious. Right? First suspicious. I checked. The money he told is the company is paying him money. Right? And I told him, Samsung and LG is a big company. So do you have any agreement with LG and Samsung? He said a verbal agreement. Do you think an LG and Samsung will do a verbal agreement with the customer and pay him two and a half crore rupees? Do you think LG and Samsung will do a verbal agreement with the customer and give him two and a half crores? Not yet. The more question I was asking him, he was getting more irritated. This guy. The more question I asked him, he was more irritated. Then he told me that my chacha is in Gujarat, my chacha is going to talk to you. I said, okay. The chacha called up in the evening. The chacha, he told me a different story. Then I told him, sir, brother, he said that this is a loan which has come. The chacha told me this is a loan which has come from this company in Dubai. I said, if this is a loan, then this, you must be having a loan agreement, a verbal agreement. I said, someone has given me two and a half crore rupees. Loan? If I take a loan from a bank of 50,000 rupees, they make me sign 50 signatures I need to put in a particular document. For two and a half years, he's giving you money blindly. He said, he told me, boss, you are a banker, be like a banker. Okay, because government of India, Mr. Modi, he is saying to bring foreign exchange, so I bought foreign exchange. <laughs> I told him, sir, please forgive me. I will not be able to print this money. I am returning this funds. Return the funds. He threatened me. 
If only I'm going to go to this police station, I'm going to do this, I'm going to put some gundas behind you. If you don't put uh, this thing, I will nothing do it. I politely rejected that particular transaction and sent the money back to the world. Right? So this kind of, you know, from what I'm trying to tell you is, when the money comes from abroad, you need to have proper justification to give it to the bank. What if this money is traveling for some terrorism activity? It can happen, right? For some terrorism activity, for promoting some terrorism, for promoting some nuisance. If I would have got, if I would have credited that money, I would have gone into my career, I would have gone boom. I would have gone into the jail for promoting that particular thing without verification. So banking job is not so easy. Right? We need to understand the motive behind that particular contract. And the motive has to be authenticated with documents. Right? So I think I've answered your question. That was that. Right? Bank statements. Why do we check bank bank statements? Suppose you are a trader. Let's take an example, madam, you are an exporter, right? You are a trader. So you prove. Suppose, for example, uh, you uh, are procuring goods from somebody else and you are exporting, right? Now, uh, what I would suggest as a banker to show me a bank statement. I ask her for a bank statement. So she is saying that my nature of the business is trader, right? I will check a bank statement whether is she getting money from the suppliers. What I will do is I will randomly call four five suppliers. Do you know this matter? Why have you paid this money to the matter? I will call up the suppliers and try to find out. So these are the checks what bank does. Right? To check the line of business. You tell, you tell me the line of business is Agarbati. So the suppliers who you are from where you are procuring, they also be in the same line of business. If they are saying I am the manufacturing of washing, I am in the manufacturing of some soap, then obviously the line of business is not working then I have to be more cautious when I'm dealing with you. Right? So because of that, the bank statements are shared. Right? The second is the company existence. Yeah, sure. So what if it's the first time you uh, Yeah. So how do you check? Is it like my first time? Yeah. So I, I have the first supplier. Yeah. So how do you check? Now, suppose, uh, what are you going to export? So you will know the product, right? Suppose let's take an example, uh, you're giving rice. Right, you are procuring rice from the farmers and you are and you are exporting, right. So you are procuring the rice now and you are making the payment to the suppliers, to the farmers, right. So they will also have to be the similar line of business. You are procuring rice from the farmers and you are exporting the rice to Bangladesh or to Myanmar, right. When I went to you, you told me I am in the business of rice. But when I saw your bank statement, you are making payments to five suppliers. So I call up individually to supplier and check, hey, do you know madam? They will say, yes, I know madam. What is the line of business? What is the payment you make to madam? So they told me, rice, I'm satisfied. If they tell me something else, like ATA or something else, some other product, then I become suspicious now. I myself is a producer and exporter. That is no problem. That is no problem. It will make your credentials stronger. 
Because now the problem is not only about Manipur, I'm seeing it in Assam also. I'm seeing it most of the places the people are doing business in cash. And the business, when it is becoming big, just that. When the business is becoming big, they don't get a loan because all the transactions are getting put through cash. So first and the foremost thing, what we need to do is, we need to make sure our credentials are proven. How can I prove? Bank doesn't know you, na? Bank, how will, I'm a banker, how do I know your credential? Your credentials will be proved by her documents. Her credentials will be proved by her documents. If the documents are not being proper, I will not write in the jail. See, bank is the money which bank gives. It's a public money. It is not bank's money. I am only custodian of banks are the custodian of public money. Do you agree to that? Banks are the custodian of public money. Do you agree to it? Tomorrow, suppose if you have 2 lakhs in your account, today, all of a sudden you come tomorrow to the bank and you give them the check of 2 lakhs, the bank should be able to pay you that 2 lakh rupees. Bank cannot say, no, I actually gave loan to that particular lady, she defaulted the loan, so I cannot give you 2 lakh rupees. Can that happen? So, ECBA, what bank does is, bank is very cautious when they are giving loans to people. Because what about the repayment? Bank only says whether this guy should be able to repay me my money back or not. Right? Yeah, you were asking something. Yeah, I can supplement with the with my friend and madam also. Yeah. Uh, we are dealing with small scale business. That's why it's that's not a huge problem for us. And if we start doing little bit bigger in size, uh, suppose if I am going to uh, have a transaction of fifty lakh, then the bank will compulsively they will ask to submit me the pen card. Absolutely. Then that time we got trap. So if I suppose if I submit my pen card, then I need to pay that tax. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Starting from that yeah. fifty thousand. So that time we need to uh, supply that particular pen card. That time we are going to travel. So only that is the case. Hex Yeah, sure. Mostly like money for business are run by the government. As long as you are not losing your money, which is not accounted, accounted money, you will not have any problem. Every money, if you have justification, there is no problem. There is no problem. See, government is concerned about tax. Government is concerned about tax. As long as you are paying, you are earning it on a legitimate way and you are paying tax to the government, there should not be any problem. The next one, please. Uh, so this is, uh, there are 11 input terms. Right? So we will go to the next slide. These are the important which Sir has already uh, covered in this earlier uh, session. These are the set of uh, input terms. Right? Yeah. Next slide. This is, will give you a clear picture. This gives you a clear picture of, you know, whose responsibility is If it is X, W, EXW, right? So uh, all the responsibilities lie on the buyer. All the responsibility lies on the buyer, the importer. Right? So this, uh, if you want to take a photograph, you can take a photograph. This slide gives you a uh, in detailed uh, uh, insight on whose responsibility is what in importer. So important you should know because uh, this gives you a clear picture of the responsibility of the exporter and importer. Whose responsibility is what? Right? So there is no conflict between exporter and importer. Yeah, depending on the negotiation. See, uh, first and foremost thing, when you are dealing with brands, when you are dealing with big brands, suppose you are, suppose you are a distributor, you are a distributor based out of Manipur and you are procuring things from Amul. You are dealing in Amul products. So do you think, do you as a uh, trader, can you dictate terms to Amul? Can you dictate terms to Amul? Suppose if you are pro procuring uh, a car from, uh, uh, some materials from Tata. Can you dictate your terms to Tata? 
they will have their own terms, right? Why are you not uh, able to dictate your terms? Because they have already an established brand. So in international trade also, whose weight is more, she will only dictate the terms. Who has a more weightage, he will dictate the terms. Right? Yeah. The next slide. I uh, will not talk about import, we will do exports. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah, can you go to the next slide, please? Next slide.
and doubt on advance payments. For bringing an advance payment, what do you require? In the bank. You need to give your account number. Right? You need to give your account number, your name. KYC address. Why do you require uh, to give your KYC documents to the overseas bank? You don't require. You just need to give an account number, your bank name, and the SWIFT code of the bank. So what is the code? Yes. The AD code is required in custom. That is the authorized dealer code. For bringing in funds, you require only three details, madam. You require the name of the account, your company's name, you require your bank account, right? And you require the SWIFT code of your bank. Now, this exporter, this importer says, I have already sent the money to you. You have not to send the money. I have already sent the money to you. That money also can be tracked where the money is. You please ask him for MT103. MT103. See, you will have to be very smart when you are exporting. Right? You tell me, you tell him, please share with me the MT103. You share with your bank and he will track the money and give it to you. Where the money is lying. Or there might be charges, the importer is lying, that he has already sent the money to you. You just write MT103, I ask him for the MT103, and he will track the funds. Where the funds are lying. Correct? Yeah, next slide please. See, uh, before this, uh, there are three payment cycles actually in exports. Please listen very carefully. This is something very, very important when you are going to export, right? There are three payment cycles. One I spoke about advance. Who goes for an advance payment when the exporter does not trust the importer? Correct? Because of that, I don't trust you. So you pay me money in advance. Right? When the exporter and importer doesn't trust each other, so always exporter tries to dictate its terms to bring the money in advance. Correct? It's logical now. If I don't if I don't know sir, I will always try to ask him for advance payment. Right? Correct man? Suppose for example, I have been dealing with you from last two years. You are an importer, I'm an exporter. Right? I've been dealing with you from last two years. Now I am telling, Madam you ship the goods, I will receive the goods and make the payment. Are you okay with that? Okay. Okay because I am, we have been dealing with the last two years. Mm -hmm. Right Madam, what do you say? Yeah. Yes, okay. Right? I have been dealing with you from the last two years. You uh, send the goods, I will make the payment to you. Are you okay with it? Yes, okay. Okay, right? Because you know me from the last two years. Mm -hmm. I will not cheat you. Mm -hmm. So this mode of payment is called as direct payment. Direct payment. Because I spoke about advance and I spoke about direct payment. When exporters and importers, they know each other and they have been doing transactions. Correct? Direct payment is understood. Right? Now there is a third instance can come up. Okay? I don't know you, you don't know me. But we want to do trade. I want to sell my products to you. Now please listen, she doesn't know me, I don't know her, right? But I, she is ordering me for 100 TVs and I want to export her 100 TVs. So what happens? She doesn't trust me, I don't trust her. She is not agreeing to, she is not trusting me because of that she is not paying me in class. We are dealing for the first time, we cannot open a direct payment also. Then what do we do in this case? How trade will happen? How the business state has to take place? The business takes place through an instrument which is called as letter of credit. LC. Letter of credit. Right? Now, she is an importer and I am an exporter. Who is the bonus now? The exporter or the importer? Exporter. Why? Exporter. Manufacturing, goods. manufacturing, packing, sending. Manufacturing, packing, everything is investing in money. Yeah. And what if this importer runs away? She doesn't pay the goods. So exporter is in more risk. Right? So 
am the exporter, she is the importer. Now in that particular case, what happens is, one of the bank comes in between both of us, from the importer's side, right? From the importer's side, what's your name? Prakash. Prakash. Mm. Prakash came, comes in between us, he is the banker. Prakash says, I will give a guarantee of the payment to the exporter. Now do you think am I am comfortable now to send the goods to her? I'm comfortable, right? Yes, sir. Prakash is a well-known brand and uh, suppose you are based out of US. He is based out of US. It's a good brand. It's a good brand in US. Right? So he is giving a declaration that don't worry, sir. You uh, someone bej do, we will I will make the payment on behalf of her. So I'm comfortable now. Now what he is doing? Why should I believe him? Why should I believe this bank? Because I am branded. Brand? Absolutely. He is selling his goodwill. Are you all commerce students? How many of you are commerce? Anyone of you commerce students? Commerce? MBA students, commerce students? Yes. There is a, there's a column called as goodwill. Have you heard about something called as goodwill? Market reputation. He is selling his goodwill and is doing his business. Goodwill comes in the asset column of the balance sheet. Goodwill is an asset. He is using his asset. He is using his asset, he is using his brand, he is using his reputation and he is selling the product to me. Do you think is he going to sell it? Yes, no. So sir, like in this case, no, I just want to ask, like in case if I am the... Tell me a little louder, everyone should hear your question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah. So like how do I connect with that like bank or like who will be the... Who will be one I will dictate my term, no? it's my money. So she might nominate a bank which is of her uncle, that uncle might cheat and run away. Being an exporter, I will dictate that terms. I will only supply goods to you if you give me an LC from Bank of America. Yeah, uh, yeah, so that, that's where the problem lies. So for example, in that bank, like, uh, so you and I, so you've been in HDFC, so I am the, like, imp like, I, I'm, like, I'm not exporter, so let's see. And then, like, I'm importing the goods. So you and I will be having the channel, right? Like because I have to approach you, Correct. and it is between us. Correct. So like you and I, we don't know each other, and I just approach you. So even you have to have the security, not just absolutely. I'm coming to it. You have read my mind before. I'm actually coming to it step by step. No, or you get confused if I jump into confusion. Right. So now what happens is, Prakash doesn't know Jane. Jane. Yeah. So Prakash doesn't know Jane now, right? So Prakash will not use his goodwill. Do you think Prakash will use his goodwill by, by, just by looking at her face? Prakash will say, Jane Madam, you give me a fixed deposit. Uh, what is the LC amount? What is the value of the goods? The value of the goods is $10,000. So you maintain $10,000 with me as a fixed deposit. And I will give a commitment. So that's very important. So she has to maintain a fixed deposit with Prakash and then Prakash will use it, use his goodwill and send the LC to you. And it's a business. Now, what happens is when Prakash sends this LC to me, okay, Madam will have his own terms and condition in the LC that the goods has to be quality, the quality of goods has to be good. Okay, the, the quality specification has to be there. She will have her own terms and condition and she will put it to Prakash. And Prakash, what he will do is, he will allow it, he will incorporate all the terms and condition in the LC and he will issue the LC to me. Okay, I will not take the LC. You being an exporter, please don't take the LC. Please don't take the LC just like that. Please take the draft of the LC first. The draft copy of the LC first from Prakash. Okay. See what are the terms and conditions in that particular LC. Whether you will be executing, you will be able to execute that particular terms and condition. If she has, if she puts 10 terms and condition, out of that 5 terms and condition I can fulfill as an exporter and 5 I cannot, then what will happen? There, there will be a problem, right? So what I will do is first I will take a draft of the LC from Prakash, look at the terms and condition, and then I will. Tell him, if I am able to 
fulfill the terms and conditions of the LC, then I will tell him to please issue me the fair copy of the LC. Once I issue, once he issues the fair copy of the LC, I don't trust him. I will nominate one of my bank in India to check the genuineness of this particular LC. Advisory bank, absolutely. So generally what happens is, sir, when you go for depositing uh, 10,000 rupees in the bank, what will happen is the cashier in the bank, he will check your note, whether this is fake or not. He will check, right, the cashier will check. Or else in the evening he has to pay it from his pocket, if there is a fake note. Right, here in the LC also there are a lot of fake LCs. We need to check whether the LC is genuine or not. So I will nominate a bank in India who will check the LC on behalf of me. Once the LC is advised, once the LC is genuine, then I will go ahead making the shipment. Then I will go ahead making the shipment. Getting my point? Right, obviously once the LC is genuine, then I will go ahead making the payment. And once once the order, when, once the LC I received, then I need to execute the order. What I will do is I'll send the goods to US. Once I make the shipment, from the date of shipment, I need to submit the documents to my bank within 21 days to bring the payment from US. Within 21 days, I need to deposit the document with the bank to bring my payment. After that, after making the shipment to US, I will pack all my things, I will pack all my documents, commercial invoice, performer invoice, packing, list, transport documents. What I will do is, I will give it to my bank. My bank will check whether the document which has been submitted by me after shipment are as per the terms and conditions of the LC or not. If my bank sends with, without checking the terms and conditions, and if when the documents reaches Prakash in US and Prakash finds out five discrepancies, five discrepancies, then what happens is Prakash will charge $30 for discrepancy. $30 for discrepancy. And then send the money to me. $30, five discrepancies, $30 into five, how much? $150? $10,000? Yes, sir. How much? That's his business. He's taking 10,000 rupees from me, 150 dollars. So that's his business. Yes, obviously. That's also it's two wheel traffic. He's not going to give you free of cost. Obviously, when he's using his goodwill to give me a course, you will, you will have given charge you money for the LC. And that money is negotiable. Yeah. So generally what happens is we, when we go to a shop we have the habit of bargaining, right? So here also you can even bargain with him. As he charges. It can be bargained. Right? So I'll just take two minutes. Okay. Yeah, this is the last slide. I um, see whenever uh, you got LCs, any doubt of LCs that are afraid of. When the exporter and the importer doesn't trust any of them, so what happens is they go for a terms and condition like letter of credit. They go for a terms and condition like letter of credit. Right? Clear? Any doubt on letter of credit? Ma'am, I hope I have cleared your doubt. Yes. Correct? Yeah. Any doubt on letter of credits? Right. Now this is the last slide. I just want to tell you the back of mine. Right? Now, whenever you have received the money from the importer in advance, whenever you have received the money from the importer in advance, okay, advance again exports, after shipment of the goods, right, obviously when you receive the money in advance, RBI gives you 9 months to export the goods. Within 9 months you will have to export the goods. After exporting the goods, right, this document has to be deposited with your bank. Commercial invoice, shipping bill, bank statement, transport document, and the request letter. Once this, that means what? The money which you have received, the money which you have received and then advanced from the importer, that much value of goods you have already exported. That much value of goods you have already exported. This is a proof. 
right? A country doesn't want that you take money in an advance and then you run away. You don't export the goods. No one will like that. And first of all, if you do that, RBI will give your case to ED and ED will be after you. And you will have sleepless nights. Once you receive a notice from ED, you will not know what to do. Right, so obviously, uh, when you are receiving the advance, you will have to send the goods. Once you send the goods within 9 months, then these are the set of documents which have to be deposited with the bank. Once you deposit this particular set of documents with the bank, bank will regularize. That means what? The money which you have received in the form of advance, that was money has, that was value of goods that travel outside the country. Right? There is a certificate which will get generated. This certificate is called as EDRC. And this has to be downloaded from the DGF report. So, yeah. within how many days that you make? After shipment, right? Right away after you receive an advance, the moment you complete the shipment, you are supposed to deposit it with the bank, with your AD bank. If you don't deposit, then bank will uh, be after your life. Bank will be after your life if you don't deposit. So, any doubt? A uh, request letter is basically bank will have its own uh, format of request format where it says this much money you have received is as an advance and that much value of goods you have that has gone out of the country also and so on. So sir, yeah. that means like I have to be always in touch with the bank whenever like I am exporting something like the process, yes. like yes. every transaction. Yeah, like not like every transaction. Yeah, yes. First and foremost thing, when the money is coming to your bank account as uh, as export. Okay, so what will happen is once the dollars come to your account, <coughs> bank will not credit <coughs> the money to your account. Bank will give you a call. Bank will give you a call and ask you, Madam, you have received five thousand dollars. Please pay know what is the reason of this five thousand dollars. You need to tell them this money I have received for exports as an advance. So is there any like uh, like you know in the phone, but then is there any time, particular time that we have to submit the documents like you know in six months I have to submit That's what I'm trying to tell you. So you receive this. money in advance, right? Bank will, the moment the money comes to your bank account, they will not credit the money. Bank will give you a call and ask you, if the money has come, money has come into the bank account, please tell me the purpose of this particular reason. So RCA has 55 purposes, 55 purpose codes. Right? You will have to select one of the genuine purpose code and give it to your bank. Bank will credit that particular money in that particular purpose code. Right? Once that particular purpose code is used for crediting the money, it will get reported to RBI. That particular set from that. Right? After completing the shipment, after you then after the money gets credited in your bank account, from the date of credit. Bank will, RBI will give you 9 months time to send the shipment. 9 months time. Right? After completing, suppose you don't require 9 months. You require, suppose for example, 1 month. You have completed the shipment in 1 month. You don't have to wait for 9 months to submit these documents. You go to your bank and deposit this documents. If you don't deposit, then bank will uh, report this particular, first they will do a SCR filing in your account. Suspicious transaction. Then they will do an ED report. And once he reports, madam, you cannot sleep in the night. They will torture you. The pressure will go up. So with this, yeah, please go ahead. So are the banks in Lagos equipped with this uh, knowledge of uh, doing export transactions? Very good. Please, please be louder. Ask me to louder. <laughs> are the banks in Lagos equipped to handle this export transactions? Okay. Yes, two now, uh, first and foremost thing, uh, I would suggest you in this case, you should whenever you are dealing with exports, you should you should know how to choose your bank. First, you go to a bank and check his knowledge whether he has knowledge on the subject. You can go any you can go any topic and have him check his. You can ask him any stupid question and ask him to check his knowledge. Right? You can check his knowledge. A person who has relevant knowledge, you should choose your bank. But like I have bank in Bank of Baroda. I went for AD code. Uh, it, it took me around a week to tell me what Ah, is correct. So, so see, AD code generally takes about two days for a bank to uh, give you the AD code. Or some bank takes about 
uh, one day to give you the any code, right? First and foremost thing, when you are choosing your bank, you should be very careful in choosing your bank and the staff who is handling your transaction. Because the bank who is handling your transaction is the particular bank staff does not have the required knowledge. That guy also will, will move, you will also be moved. So in that, I just want to suggest something since yeah. we are from HDFC, yeah. like uh, the Infal branch. Uh, I think like um, it will be much better in case like you have so much of knowledge, yeah. so you like you know give a little bit of knowledge to them so that they yeah. can even know what is meant by the. Sure. Code. So Actually, uh, uh, in Manipur and Mizoram, I do take care of this particular states. Yeah. Okay, but uh, you are free to give me a call at any point of time because I have yeah. I have a, a consult. I also work as a consultant privately. So you can, at any point of time, if you have any doubts, I'll share you my numbers. So you can get in touch with uh, me. I can take you through, I can guide you through the transactions. How to go about Because that will be like much easier, you know. No like problem. Man. You give me a call at any point of time. My number is, please take a note of my number. Uh, yeah, my number is 920, <coughs> 920-70-34892. 892. My name is Rasbir Mosi. So uh, what I do is uh, I uh, I'm a I had this uh, uh, international business for HDFC Bank, except for Manipur and Mizoram. And I also do uh, I am also a consultant to many of the organizations. So we have a small consulting company. So we uh, you know uh, help these uh, exporters and importers to go through various registrations like IE code like. Uh, uh, Federation of Indian Export Registrations, Certificate of Origin, anything pertaining to import and export, you can get in touch with me. All government registrations, we do it. I can will assist you, will give you guidance oh. in any how, uh, in any how we can. Compliances right. also, as in like uh, I have IE port, I have RCMC, but like related to my product, I need certain you know compliances uh, knowledge. Let's see if I'm exporting to you, EU or America. The compliances they, you know, they particularly report, even though it, it is not listed. See, in first and foremost thing, what are the products we are going to export? We need to find out the HS import, yeah. right? We need to uh, we need to find out the logistic cost, right? We need to get in touch with the uh, shipping company and find out the logistic cost. Then we need to find out the CHA uh, cost, right? We need to find out all the cost expects, which is required to be which is required to be considered for sending your goods to US. Right? Then you will have to come up with your pricing. Right? right? Or else it will be a loss thing. So you can, what you can do is, uh, you can get an appointment from me, we can get you to a video conference, a virtual call, we can discuss about all your doubts and I can give you some good tips. How to handle it. Any other queries? Yes sir, please.
uh, if you go to any job sites like Nokti.com or LinkedIn, okay. So uh, there are a lot of job openings for international trade. Companies are looking for people who can work on international trade, right? Export and import. I'm talking about students who are who wants to pursue their career, right? Uh, what we do is we also have training sessions on regular interviews. You can get in touch with me. We can, you know, you can attend some of the training sessions or I was in touch with sir, I can also come down here to teach you. I uh, want our students from Manipur University to be empowered and you should take the full uh, advantage of filling up this particular job with your knowledge. Right? So if anything I can do from you, from my side in Manipur, please do let me know. Because I'll be very happy to be one of one of our news to help you to grow your career. Thank you so much, uh, sir. Thank you for the exhibition at CFC Bank, Guwahati. So I request uh, all the participants to give a big round. Thank you, sir. Thank you.